Many people know that Polaris, the brightest star in the constellation Ursa Minor, the little bear, is also known as the pole star. Indeed, the name Polaris itself was invented in the 16th century and comes from the Latin Stella Polaris, pole star. Polaris is located roughly one and a half times the diameter of the moon away from the projection of the North Pole into the sky. This point is known as the North Celestial Pole. If we look over the course of a night, the Earth's rotation means that all stars appear to rotate around the North Celestial Pole. This includes Polaris as well, because Polaris isn't located exactly at the North Celestial Pole. This picture shows a long exposure of the night sky looking northwards. All the stars appear to move in arcs around a point close to Polaris, the North Celestial Pole. The orange and green areas at the bottom of the image are just caused by light pollution. Because Polaris is almost exactly due north anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere, for many centuries it's been used by navigators to find the way. Two bright stars in Ursa Major, that's the Great Bear, are known as the pointers and can be used to locate Polaris. Polaris is quite a bright star, 48th brightest star in the sky. Um, it lies at a distance of 430 light years away from us. Now, although to the naked eye, Polaris appears as a single star. It actually consists of three separate stars. The main star is actually a double star with two separate components, which can't be resolved with optical telescopes on the Earth. They're so close. They go around each other every 29 years. There's a further component, Polaris B, which orbits the pair every 5,000 years. But Polaris hasn't always been the pole star. The Earth's axis is tilted at 23.44 degrees to the plane of its orbit. It's this tilt which causes the seasons. In June, the North Pole is tilted towards the Sun. That's the Northern Hemisphere, summer. In December, the South Pole is tilted towards the Sun. That's the Southern Hemisphere, summer. Although Polaris is almost directly above the North Pole today, it's been known for over 2000 years that the orientation of the Earth's axis isn't fixed with respect to the background start. Instead, it slowly rotates in a circle, completing one revolution every 25,800 years. And this causes the position of the North Celestial Pole to slowly change. So this diagram shows how the position of the North Celestial Pole, which is marked by the Blue Cross, changes over the 25,800 year cycle. 5,000 years ago, it was close to Thuban in the constellation Draco, the dragon. In the year 10,000, it will lie close to Deneb in the constellation Cygnus, the swan. In the year 14,000, it will lie close to Vega, which is actually the fifth brightest star in the Northern Hemisphere. Other examples of precession you may be more familiar with are the spinning top. 
In the case of the gyroscope or top, the precession is caused by gravity exerting a torque. If the top isn't spinning, this torque causes it just to fall over. But if it is spinning, the torque acts slightly differently. It constantly changes the orientation of the spin axis, causing it to trace out a circular path. The maths isn't particularly difficult, and I've put a link here if you want to find out more. The interesting thing is the more rapidly the top spins, the more slowly it precesses. And here's a bit more information, but once again, if you want to find out more, then I suggest you have a look at that link, which gives you quite a lot of useful information. In the case of the Earth, the torque is exerted mainly by the sun and the moon. And it happens because the Earth isn't a perfect sphere. It's slightly flattened at the equator and the pull of gravity on this bulge tries to change the orientation of the Earth's spin axis in the same way as the Earth's gravity changes the orientation of the top. And it's this twisting effect caused by the sun's pull on the equatorial bulge which causes the Earth's rotation axis to precess. Now, so far, we've just talked about the Northern Hemisphere. So the question is, what about the Southern Hemisphere? Well, there isn't a bright star neath, near the South Celestial Pole. The nearest star visible with the naked eye is a star called Sigma Octanis, and it's in the constellation Octanis, the Octant. And it's about one degree away from the South Celestial Pole. So that's roughly um, twice the diameter of the moon in the sky. However, Sigma Otanis is so faint, it's only visible to the naked eye in rural areas away from light pollution. We can look over the 26,000 year cycle and see how the position of the south celestial pole changes. And in 12,000 years time, the south celestial pole will lie reasonably close, well, within eight degrees of the second brightest star in the sky, Canopus.